And welcome back. Another episode of the Let's Not Do This podcast. Coming at you Tuesday, August 29th, the year of our Lord, 2023. Sitting alongside two of the three unwise men. You got the big O, Leon Oliver. Sitting not as quite Zelensky as he usually looks. Scotty Too Hotty, how are you, sir? Uh, doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right there. And uh, in a very shiny red hat. Is it a Red Sox hat? Yes, sir. Oh, there we go. Is, is that from uh, the Red one from like 1975? Did you get it from Carlton Fisk? Uh, he probably like gave it to me at some point. Oh, he gave something but, else to you, too, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> one Speaking of our... Cr- crazy Boston Knights. Speaking of old people, did you see that Sister Jean threw out the first pitch? I think it was yesterday or the day before at uh, Wrigley. Did she stand? She, no. She was celebrating her uh, 104th <laughs> birthday. <laughs> wow. Could you imagine being 104 years old? No. I think I would just want to die like every day like, yeah, well, if I was 104. Like, what do you do? I don't know. Once I hit 80, I think I'm good. I mean, evidently, <laughs> you throw out first pitches at Cubs game. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know. <laughs> We're just going to knock on wood that, that I hit 42, you know I mean? Like, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, it's been touch and go a few times. Speaking of touch and go, um, our uh, buddy uh, Chris Green, uh, not with us this week, serving a uh, indefinite suspension for conduct, uh, conduct detrimental to the program. Uh, we'll leave it at that. You know, this is a very... Very Bobby Bowden, 1995 uh, suspension there. You know, what they on boys will be boys, you know, at Florida State. Well, uh, you know, w- w- sometimes Bobby would suspend someone for a first half against Duke. Uh, Chris is indefinitely suspended from right. the uh, program there. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a uh, who got suspended indefinitely in the, in the, uh, in the NBA. It was uh, Ja? Yes. Yeah. Uh, look at me! Look at me, the <laughs> NBA savant. I know a jaw, and it's not rule. Right. Well, at least you're becoming self-aware. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm like AI. Once I become fully self-aware, that's when I really become problematic. Well, I become sentient. I think you're more like AI. Sentient. Like you're gonna destroy the world. Oh, well, you know. that's, that's the AI you're like. I thought you were gonna say AI like I was gonna hit you with the crossover, you know, the killer cross, no, or never, or a cheer, <laughs> or, or a chair in the Newport News bowling alley. Allegedly. Hey, where was he at when, when they had that fight in the? What was it, Biloxi? Where was it? Someone, somewhere down south. All AI? the white people. When all the white people fought the black people like two weeks ago. Oh, that was uh, Montgomery. Yeah, Alabama. yeah, Montgomery was Alabama. Alabama. Okay, yeah. Where was he at? He's the ultimate like chair. You, you needed him, and you needed Bobby Knight. These are the two famous like <laughs> chair people of all time. You probably got PTSD from it <laughs> watching it. <laughs> the white people really lost that one. Yeah, they they, did. they yeah. really they needed did. one Robert Montgomery Knight to uh, come out there. <laughs> I think uh, Devon would would say something different about being you know the most you know. Adept at hitting the chair, Devon Dudley, Dudley boys. Get the tables. <laughs> I think Al Snow and might have something, something to say too. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe, and old, maybe. Old hardcore guys. <laughs> and speaking of hardcore guys, Scotty, how was your weekend? Did you uh, do anything hardcore with some guys? <laughs> had a pretty busy weekend actually. Yeah, Went uh, to that. I think I mentioned it last week. I had a uh, little co-ed baby shower. That was a. Uh, that was more fun than I thought it was going to be, and then. We had the uh, fantasy draft on Sunday. At the baby shower, did you play the game that girls play where they, like, put the chocolate sauce in the diaper and you got to, like, eat the sauce out of the diaper? No. No? I have no idea what you're talking about. You've never seen that, Ryan? Have you seen that? No. <laughs> girls, they, they play, maybe just a movie thing, but I've seen it where they, they put, like, chocolate sauce in the diaper and it looks like you're eating shit out of a diaper. It's really weird. It's really, girls do some weird shit. I think you got to have some weird dreams. Yeah, well, you know, those pregnant fantasies, you know, we, we never know what happens. All right, but so you went to a baby shower. Did you give a gift? <laughs> or was it the yeah, box luckily, of Luckily, uh, luckily they had a, a registry because I had no idea what to get. Never been to a baby shower. Yeah, what the fuck? Is it the boy or girl? A boy. It's a boy. Yeah, what a. Oh, right, uh, so I went to Kroger to get like a gift bag or whatever, and they didn't have any blue ones or anything baby related. So I got like a red gift bag, and it, I was the only one that everything else was blue on the table. <laughs> Not this big ass red bag. <laughs> so, so you were trying to make the baby a communist right off the bat, a Marxist. Uh, those are your words. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's 2023, Scotty. You know, you were not trying to gender the baby. So I give you applause. There for you that, go. So. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. There we go. You just wanted to make him a Stalinist. Yeah. That's all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and someone that was alive in the Bolshevik uh, Revolution of 19, uh, what was it, 1917 or Russians? Yeah, Ryan, I think uh, so. you, you were there. You pushed back uh, against the uh, czar. How was your weekend? <laughs> it was good. It was. Uh, 
Saturday to do much of nothing but watch. Uh, I don't know what I was watching on Saturday. Uh, Little League Baseball and watching Major League Baseball. I didn't watch a lot of college football uh, on Saturday. I watched a little bit towards the end of the day, but um, relaxed on Saturday. And then I participated in the uh, fantasy draft. Yeah, we had a, a fantasy draft for Scotty's League. Uh, I watched football all day Saturday. It was glorious. I think Notre Dame just scored again against Navy. Um, and then we went over to uh, Scotty's parents' house. Thank you so much. And lovely people, by the way, for having us. The food Appreciate was great. That. The spread was great. I don't know what happened to Scotty because they're lovely people. Uh, they were on their best behavior. Yeah, ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, apparently the family dog really likes me. A little, a little too much. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. I was getting stressed out. <laughs> Trying to run the draft and make sure the dog wasn't jumping on everybody. The family dog. Um, <laughs> uh, what was his name? Buster. Buster. Yeah, I want to call him Buster Brown. Oh, old Buster Brown. <laughs> Buster Brown. It's beatboxing through the door, you know, as I was coming. I was like, oh, he's a meaty boy. Okay. He's he's chunk. Okay. We're, we're good. We're having a little fun. We're hanging out. I go to sit down. I give him some pats. Oh, you're a good boy. Then he pisses on me. You know, and I, now I know what R. Kelly's, like, victims felt like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to drip on you. I want to piss on you. <laughs> but uh, it was all in good fun. He was being a good boy. He was my best friend the rest of the night after after that. Yeah. And but by the way, that shows you just how great dogs are. What other species or whatever could piss on you and you would like love it afterwards? Except for Scotty, yeah. he normally pays for that sort of thing. <laughs> and maybe our forty fifth president. What a question! Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, there were allegations. I don't know what he did. I don't. Uh, yeah, 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 like I said, you don't want to you don't want to be called up for testimony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, um, but no, it was a, it was a good time, Scott. You have a very peculiar way of setting a draft order. I've never experienced this before. Yeah, so I actually found this on Reddit years ago. But um, but yeah, we do a uh, a PlayStation. We have the WWE game, and we just set it to all computers. Everybody has a wrestler. I created wrestlers for most everybody except for like four people, I think it was, and they just pick like The Rock or whoever they want, and they do a Royal Rumble, and it's all computer uh, simulated. You we watch and. Pick the order that way. Yeah, my my character looked like he uh, had <laughs> ate several bags of sand <laughs> and had skinned a turtle and used its uh, shell as a I don't know it, armor or something. His, his character got tired getting into the <laughs> ring. Yeah, that was a, a subtle fat reference there. Literally, he got into the ring and then immediately proceeded to the turnbuckle where he sat and breathed heavily for. Yeah, he hung in there though. <laughs> Was it uh, art imitates life or whatever you know? <laughs> so yeah, Ryan's hey. character was like on PCP, like throwing hey, people man. around. Hey man, I was second one in, third one out. Yeah, third, third to the last out. So I'll take that, man. And, and Chris's he character made me had, proud. He made me proud. Yeah, Chris was getting beat the hell up and somehow won the whole thing. Yeah, and Chris had a, a skirt on too. His, his character <laughs> just, did, which is also was not art a skirt. It life. was a uh, kilt. A kilt. There ain't nothing Scottish about that guy. So <laughs> that's the skirt. Chris's character just laying on the ground so much. I think people just forgot him. The other wrestlers just forgot about him. Yeah, he was taking smoke yep. breaks and stuff. And it was like two, three, three wrestlers left. He said yeah. to stand up. Hey, yeah. that's a strat- <laughs> that's a strategy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so we, we we did a little fantasy draft. So we'll keep you guys posted of uh, the ongoings in the fantasy league as we go throughout the season. I'm sure uh, there'll be some humiliating bets and losses and things of that nature during the NFL season. But um, you know, speaking of NFL, uh, we conclude our preview series. Uh, this at well the divisions at least the uh, previews uh, this evening with the East the Beast of the East the AFC East and the NFC East um, you know what and I've been starting this thing off but Ryan since we're dealing with the NFC East and we're dealing with your team and their proverbial hope every preseason which always leads to dread and despair and disappointment and my laughter. I'm going to start with you, uh, resident Dallas Cowboys fan. But unlike most of them, you've actually set foot in the state of Texas. So that's good. Yes, yes, um, your thoughts heading into the season uh, 2023 in the NFC East? Um, I think the East is definitely um, – I still think it's Philadelphia's to lose. I know a lot of people think Philadelphia's going to take a step back because nobody's won the NFC East twice. And sometimes, you know, in, you know. Their luck last year was really – well, it wasn't luck, but a lot of their success was based on them not being injured. I think their offensive line had literally no injuries. I think they had the most healthy offensive line, which I think helped them immensely last year. But I still think it's their division to lose. I think just from, you know, their their, their best 22, you know, on offense and defense is better than any other team. They have less holes. Um, but I do think – 
they are vulnerable to having maybe a, uh, a Super Bowl hangover, possibly earlier in the year. Who knows? They may get knocked off by a couple of teams have a slow start. But I still think that um, when it comes to the division, I think they will figure it out and win it. Um, again, I think Dallas can can win the division, but I just think, I don't know, I just don't trust, being a Cowboys fan, I just don't trust Dak to do what he needs to do in key situations. Again, they may be a game behind the Eagles. It may be very close in the division, but I think the Eagles will win the division. Um, Giants, uh, Giants, I don't know, man. I, again, it's, 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 it's a Daniel Jones thing. Like, can he take the next step on the Day Bowls? You know, tenure is he good enough to take that next step to be maybe a a, a better ver- or a better version of himself, but closer to Josh Allen? We'll we'll see. I, again, I, I'm just not sold on him yet. The receivers are still kind of sketchy. I think their defense will be better uh, with the, some of the additions that they made. Um, but you know, uh, uh, their their defense end being uh, the, the rookie from Oregon um, is like a French name, uh, Thibodeau. K- Kayvon Thibodeau. Yeah. Thibodeau. Yeah. yeah. He'll be a little bit better this, this upcoming year. He was really good at the end of last year. And then um, and I think Washington, again, uh, they'll, I still think they'll bring up the rear, but I think they will be a very competitive last place team. Um, definitely Sam Howell will kind of be the bellwether, uh, you know, in terms of how good they are and how bad they are. I think their defense, honestly, may be the best in the division. I think, honestly, they're, they're very stout. I think their secondary may be a little – Maybe a little – that corner is more than, their, more than their safety. Maybe a little suspect, but their front, their front, their front five, front four is going to be tough. The linebackers are okay, but usually if Allen and Payne are disrupting things, they're going to have a, 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 you know, a, a pretty good game. They'll hang in there. So we'll see what Sam out does. So I think it's Eagles, Cowboys close second, Giants close third, and then – uh, commanders bring up the rear, but they're still. It's going to be tightly packed. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think maybe more than four games between the top team and the, and the uh, last place team. Have the commanders changed their name again since you got done talking there? Maybe. I just want to check because you yeah. never know. I mean, uh, they've, they've, they've been know. through like three. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, Josh Harris wasn't wearing the logo. Uh, it, I, would you want to wear that logo? That's the most hideous <laughs> merch I've ever seen. I think he was also drunk in the booth when they uh, interviewed him when they played the. Uh, was it the Ravens? Ravens. Yeah, it I forget Ravens. what game it was. Yeah. yeah. Did you see when Joe Buck was like just talking with his hands out and he, he went to go like shake his hand? Over. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> that's the best life. In that <laughs> yeah. Washington organization, you know, they're used to touching people and doing things inappropriately. And a little bit of a dance night or hangover, allegedly. <laughs> you know, who knows? <laughs> who knows what's going on there? Scott, are you the uh, resident uh, commandos, command cheese, commando? What, what, what do they call themselves? Uh, commanders, I think. Commanders. It is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just, you know, communists, whatever they are. You're the resident uh, fan of the, that franchise. Your uh, your thoughts on the NFC East? I kind of agree almost completely with what Ryan said. You know, the, that's scary. Now look, the Commanders. I'm not picking them to win a division, but I will say, if and it's a huge if, um, I'm not banking on it because I will never put my faith in one of our quarterbacks until it happens. But uh, if he looks like a legit starting quarterback. With that defense, if Emmanuel Forbes, the first round pick, can be a player, I mean, they they'll have a shot. And it's it's years like these because you know they haven't had a back to back division winner in what like twenty twenty four twenty five years. It's, it's been a it's while. Been a while yeah. These are the years we win the division when everybody's picking us to be last. Nobody's expecting anything from us. These are the years. So I mean, it does fall on Hal. Is he? A legit starting quarterback. I mean, we'll just have to see. But yeah, the defense is going to be great. Um, I think we have two number one receivers. Offensive line's a little shaky, but um, yeah. hopefully they'll be okay. But uh, we have, I think we have a very low floor and a very high ceiling in the division. But um, I'm not picking us. I'm not picking the Giants. The Giants will maybe contend for a wild card. They're just going to be very average. Um, they didn't get – they got Daniel Jones, Darren Waller, but is he going to stay healthy? Hey, is Hyatt. he past his prime? Hyatt maybe, but I don't know. First-year receiver, I can't put too much faith in him. Um, but uh, they got a solid defense. I just – they'll be very average. And then I will say this about the Cowboys. You'll probably never hear me, hear me say this again. They have what? as much talent as anybody in that conference, maybe the NFL. But like Ryan was saying, Dak, is he going to avoid that collapse – is uh, the coach going to avoid his collapse? Um, he's, calling, he's calling plays this year, so if he doesn't okay, do it, well, it's going to yeah. be his problem. I mean, right. it's going to so, be on him, so. Yeah, he's got to – I mean, 
I won't say Super Bowl or bust for him, but maybe. Uh, no. But I mean, yeah, I, I got to go with the Eagles. Um, I think they're going to be the first team to go back to back in the division in a while. They're just they're too good everywhere. Um, and they got there last year. I just yeah. yeah. I'm right there with you. It's a unanimous sweep across the board. Philadelphia, and I don't, I don't think it's as close as some of you guys think. I think this division will be very competitive, but I think, I don't think Philly's going to walk away with it. But I think they'll be comfortably in charge. I think for most of the year, um, I just don't see a lot of weaknesses. Yeah, they lost some people defensively, um, offensively. I mean, they still have so many weapons, so many ways to hurt you. As long as you know Jalen Hurts can stay healthy, they keep him up, upright. I just don't see that thing slowing down anytime soon in Philadelphia. Dallas is an intriguing team uh, to me, and uh, this might not be a popular take, but I think they're going to miss uh, Ezekiel Elliott more than they think. Um, I don't think Tony Pollard is the answer completely at running back. Then you have Deuce Vaughn, but, I mean, he's so little. <laughs> he's he's not an every-down guy. Uh, what, what happens there? I mean, even last year we saw with Amari Cooper being gone, the receiving core missing him as well. Now, what, like Dalton Schultz is gone, right, the tight end. He's in Houston. Uh, so I think they, they're going to miss some pieces off that offense. Defense, you know, Michael Parsons is all over the place playing like a man possessed. I think he's put on some bulk, I want to say, this offseason. Yeah, he gained about 10 pounds because they're playing more at end yeah. this year. And then, you know, you got Stephon Gilmore back there. I mean, obviously we, we know what Diggs can, can do in the secondary. But it, once again, the problem comes back to Dak. Um, number one for me, can Dak stay healthy? Uh, and number two, the interceptions. Um, you know, last year that was a big problem, the ball security. And now we have Trey, Trey Lance. And, and looking at some of the interviews and stuff, he wasn't exactly thrilled that uh, Trey Lance was there. So now you kind of feel like maybe you got a guy breathing over your shoulder a little bit now. And that can go one of two ways, really good or really bad. Um, but I'm actually going to put them as my number three team in this division. Hmm. My surprise team uh, – in the East, I'm going to go with the uh, Washington Commanders, oh, shit. actually. Uh, Sam Howell, you know, it's funny. Ron, uh, R- Rivera said, you know, I didn't know he was this good. I would have played him beforehand. Kind of a really <laughs> stupid statement for the coach to say. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> whatever floats your boat, Riverboat Ron. You got Eric Bieniemy. Uh, that offense is going to have some different looks. They got some more weapons there. I mean, Terry McLaurin's already a little nicked up going into the season. Uh, but him and Dotson, when healthy, are a pretty good one-two punch at receiver. Uh, you know, they that defense is going to be good. Uh, if Chase Young can, like, for the love of God, stay healthy and get on the field and show what made him a top, you know, pick. Um, no, I, I think th- I think the over under this team was like six and a half wins this year. Yeah. I think that's a team can, that can flirt with nine wins, maybe getting you know get into the wild card. I, I I think it sets up for them. The Giants, as you said, are just kind of kind of going to be average. What I think they kind of go as Saquon goes. If you stack the box and. Make Daniel Jones beat you. I'm not sure they can do that. I uh, don't trust Sterling Shepard yet. And you're right. Jalen Hyde is a young guy. And how much wear is left on the tires for um, for Darren Waller? Yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of look at it a little jumbled up. But I go Philly, Washington, Dallas with the Giants uh, bringing up the rear. I, I think the biggest issue with Washington – Again, I think their defense is going to be great. I think their defense will be just as good as it'll be top. It'll be a top six, seven defense in the league at worst. I mean, it should be with their schedule. They should be top seven. But Scotty made a good point about the offensive line. If they can't protect Howell, it's going to be a disaster back there because, you know, he's going to need time to be able to read the field and throw unless the enemy makes it very, very, you know, simple for him, which – he may. I mean, be any, be any, maybe three steps, get the ball out type of offense because he knows the line is going to hold up. But we'll see. And also the run game's got to get better. Again, just last year, Robinson was great. I, I, not being a, uh, a, a Washington a Commanders fan, happy to see that man play anything last year after being, uh, after being shot like that. But, um, but if he can't average more than, you know, three and a half yards a carry, then it's just going gonna, gonna to put too much pressure on Howell. I mean, they've got to – the line has got to block. <laughs> yeah, I actually think our run game's a little overrated. Um, I mean, I like Gibson and Robinson. Well, we don't know what Robinson can do yet. We'll see what he does this year. But everybody's like, oh, Gibson's this weapon. Uh, a poor man's McCaffrey with Rivera is what they were saying last year. I just – he's never really done much since he's been there. So, I mean, he's okay. But, yeah, 
I think I think I think the guy that has to produce for you guys this year, even though he's been kind of inconsistent, is Curtis Samuel. He's got to be like the guy. The since you really don't have a tight end, tight end, he's got to be like almost like Kelsey. He's got to be the guy that, that gets across the middle, kind of the safety uh, safety blanket for Howell. Because I just right now, I mean, there's no Kelsey, <laughs> like there just isn't. So they have to somehow <laughs> yeah. produce that somehow. Maybe it's Gibson. I don't know, but. They've got to be able to get that ball out, I think, quick. And I think it's going to have to be looking at Samuel five yards, you know, slant in or five yard out just to yep. get how out of harm's way sometimes. Yeah, I suppose later I suppose to use Gibson more as a, as a receiver this year. If like, okay. He was a receiver in college. He, they really haven't yeah. let him show that yet. So, yeah, right. we'll see. We'll see. Well, we'll see what happens in the – AFC East now, uh, moving over there. I'll start here. Of course, all the noise in the offseason, the AFC East turned toward the uh, former New York football Titans, the New York Jets. They have uh, one Aaron Rodgers coming over and I think half the old Packers, Randall Cobb and Alan, Liz- Alan Lazard. And uh, now they just got Dalvin Cook from Green Bay. He's finally practicing. Apparently, I didn't notice he was hadn't practiced yet. I guess he was on the paternity leave. I guess he just had his first kid. So he's finally practicing and suiting up. Um you know, you got Garrett Wilson, you, you, you got Sauce Gardner. It's a very loaded, talented team. They're on hard knocks. They're getting on the national attention. Uh, but I want to start off with my division champ. No one, I feel like no one's talking about them. And they're a Super Bowl contender, in my opinion, is the Miami Dolphins. And obviously their name had been bantered about if they were going to get Jonathan Taylor. Obviously we see the Colts now have put him on the pup list, so we know he's out for the first four games. Um, I think if you add him to that team, that's definitely a Super Bowl team. The key for them is just Tua. Can Tua stay healthy? Uh, We've seen what that offense did last year, especially in the first part of the season. Um, I mean, Tyreek Hill is just, you know, a cheat code. Jalen Waddell uh, takes the top off the defense as well. Um, If they can get anything from that run game and keep Tua upright, the defense is very good. Um, I like Miami to win that division. Um, Behind them, honestly, I think it's going to be the Jets. Um, that defense is really good. Aaron, you know, yeah, he didn't throw for 300 yards in a single game last year in Green Bay, but he didn't have any weapons. Um, you know, he's got weapons all around him now in New York. That line is the question with the Jets, you know, um, that offensive line, how will they gel together? How will they protect him? Um, and I think Buffalo is going to be the third team. I think that window is starting to close a little bit for Buffalo. And there's rumors that maybe Stephon Diggs isn't happy. Uh, you know, you can't run Josh Allen the way you've been running Josh Allen consistently. I mean, we saw what happened to Cam Newton over his career. Quarterbacks just aren't designed to take those sort of hits. And it ain't a question of if, it's when he's going to suffer a, a setback and get hurt. Um, and then New England's going to be a feisty bottom bottom team. I mean, New England plays good defense. So, you know, best one of the best defenses in the NFL last year. Um, you know, they can get anything from Mac Jones. Uh, that would be great. I think Zeke is going to be a good addition there. I think they'll be able to run the ball with him and Ramondre Stevenson. I uh, saw so they released Damian Harris earlier, and apparently they released Bailey Zappi and Malik Cunningham too. So they must really like Mac Jones because they don't have another quarterback uh, right right now. <laughs> so maybe Zeke will, will take Greer. some Wildcat, you know. Will Greer. Oh, yeah. Ben, ben DiNucci is available now too. So, you know, who yeah, knows? Uh, but, no, I think New England will be a feisty four. But uh, I think Miami uh, wins the AFC uh, East there. Wow. Scotty? I think the Patriots are not going to be very good at all. I mean, they'll have a good defense, but – Apparently, Belichick does not like Mac Jones, and then he just cut the rest of his quarterbacks. So it's like, what is he doing? I, I think Belichick's kind of like checking out. I don't think he really cares anymore. I think his legacy is there. He's just like you hear him talk. I mean, he always sounds like he doesn't care anyways, but it's like extra. <laughs> like He's just like, yeah, whatever, man. Like When he talks to me, that's what he sounds like. I just – yeah, they don't have any weapons. I like Ramondre Stevenson on the offense, but that's really it. The offensive line isn't great. Um, they have Juju. Don't they have Juju? Yeah, yeah they, they have, have Juju, Juju Smith-Schuster. <laughs> he's okay. Smith Smith no, I mean, he's okay, but <laughs> he's you don't, not want, you don't want him to be your only receiver. Right. right. He's not number I one. Just, I don't think they're going to be very good at all. Yeah, they're going to miss Jacoby Myers, uh, too, who's out in Vegas now. And, the, yeah, the uh, – Shockingly, after the uh, <laughs> miracle in Vegas. <laughs> I wanted to pick the Dolphins to win, but they're just tied to Tua's health, and I just can't – I can't bank on him staying healthy the whole year. Um well, they got Mike White now as the backup, you know. He's Jets, not going to you know, win you with division. He's, <laughs> he's fine. He's a backup. But uh, I can't pick the Dolphins. So, I can't believe I'm doing this. 
I hated them like a few weeks ago, and I think maybe I'm getting wrapped up in the hard knocks thing. But I'm going with the Jets. Uh, Aaron Rodgers seems to be like just meshing well. He's like playing the mentor role, something he never did in Green Bay. He seems to love it there. They seem to love him. He has a great chemistry already with uh, Garrett Wilson. I think that's going to be a problem. They have a dynamic duo at running back. The defense is good. Um, like you were talking about with the Bills, like is Diggs happy there or is he not? Like there's conflicting reports. Uh, seems like some drama. Doesn't really look like they did much to get better this year, the Bills. So uh, probably going to hate myself for this, but I'm going to New York Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And then speaking of the Bills, uh, Von Miller out, I think, four games too, right? Uh, yeah, year. I think he's on like the, the pup list. Yeah, or the pup list yeah. as well. Yeah, so that, that defense, which already lost a couple pieces, takes another blow. Um, yeah. Ryan, now I know you were there when Buffalo was first in an expansion team in the AFL, so there might be some – Affinity there, and you had your OJ jersey me and, growing me and, up. Me and OJ. <laughs> Orndahl. <laughs> Did Orndahl you draft Orndahl in your first fantasy league? Matter of fact, I did. Him and, uh, him and uh, what's the quarterback name? Uh, what's Jack Kemp? Name? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jack You're Kemp. Vice president on uh, Bob Dole's ticket. <laughs> right, he was. 1996. Back I didn't realize he was honestly a Buffalo Bill until he, <laughs> he ran for vice president. I was like, oh, he's a quarterback too? All right. There we go. Um this is a tough division to, to kind of handicap, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the Bills, the Dolphins, the Jets all have positives. They all have negatives. Um, but unfortunately, I know I'm, like, jinxing myself because I'm agreeing with the guy to the left of me. But uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> sometimes you're far left. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Dolphins. Um I just think last year they were playing so well before Tua got hurt. And I know that's the big key to Miami is Tua staying healthy. But if he can stay healthy, I don't think anybody can touch them offensively in that division. They're just so fast with Waddle and Tariq Hill. And, I mean, Mostert can run. Jeff Wills can run. The running backs can really run. Um, I mean, I just think they're going to be good. Uh, The defense – I think it's going to be very uh, – it's going to be very underrated. People aren't talking about Jalen Ramsey being on that team because um, he's got because he got hurt. But he'll be back mid at the beginning of the season. I think, no, I think it's mid-December. Oh, is it mid-December? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's going to be out for a little bit. It is a while. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, really? Okay. He had a meniscus tear, which uh, I know now firsthand is not fun. Okay. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, you do. I, I tore, I've torn mine in my distant past. But, yeah, it's not a fun injury. So, I, okay. Well – him not being there still, I think their defense should be solid. I mean, you got Christian Wilkins, you got Bradley Chubb, you got I, – I, they, their defense should be a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to go Dolphins, one. Two, I'm going to go Bills. Um, again, I think the Bills last year just had a lot going on with them with the whole DeMar uh, Hamlin thing, uh, as long as Stephon Diggs and keep his head on straight because he wants the ball more, even though he gets thrown to as much as any uh, receiver in the league. If he can get his head on straight, you know, James Cook, he's going to be a big key for them. If he gets going uh, with the run games, that's what they really, 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 really do need. Um, you can't win in Buffalo in December and January throwing the ball and having your running back or having your quarterback, having your running back be your quarterback, basically. Um, I think their defense will get a little bit better with McDermott calling plays. Um, unfortunately, uh, I think, um, gosh, why am I so uh, blank on people's names today? They're DC from last year. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I, just, I forget his name. I know you're talking about I that. Just yeah. think, I just think the game had passed him a little bit. <laughs> I just don't think some of the things he was doing in that game against Miami were crazy to me, considering that Miami's playing their fourth string quarterback, third string quarterback at that point. So, um, I got Buffalo at second, um, uh, Jets third. I like the Jets, man, but. I don't know, man. Just I think it's so much hype. It's like bound to fail. Um, again, their running back room. Again, Brees Hall is not going to be Brees Hall from last year. He's coming back from ACL. That's it's going to be it's going to be Dalvin Cook. It's going to have to carry the the load at least the first half of the year till Brees Hall gets like at least a year. Um, uh, you know, a, a year after that ACL injury. Um, receivers, I like. I really do like uh, Garrett Wilson. But, again, just Alan Lazard and McCole Hardman and I think them getting rid of Elijah Moore was a mistake. Honestly, I think that guy 
would be a great compliment to to uh, to Wilson, but they let him go. So I, I again, I just you know, uh, what's the guy's name? Randall Cobb. Eh. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think their offense is a little hyped. I mean, they're not much better than what Green Bay had last year. To be honest with you, because most of the players from Green Bay are now on the Jets. <laughs> their running backs in Green Bay were much better. Aaron Jones, a- AJ Dillon. That's a great running back combination compared to Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook. I'll take those two over those two. So, I mean, I, I just I don't think their offense is going to be that much better, to be honest with you. Um, I think their defense is going to have to carry the load for them a lot this year, too, especially since, especially until Rodgers really does get a rhythm uh, behind him and figure out what these receivers can do. There's still new ones that he has that he's, that he's playing with other than Cobb and Lazard, really. But, again, you can't really count on them to be leaders. It's going to have to be Wilson. It's going to have to be... Whoever the hell else they got playing receiver again, I, I just think they're going to be third. And then the Patriots, I'll be short and crooked them. They're just a, a dumpster fire again. They have no quarterback. They signed Zeke Elliott. God love him, cowboy. <laughs> he's a cowboy for a long time, but he's done. They have no receivers. The defense is okay, I guess, because Belichick's coaching them. But they, I mean, literally, they, they're they're uh, they're uh, win line. I think is seven and a half. I think I may go on tonight and. Bet under. that under, under, under. Yeah. Like literally, like if they win eight games this year, it would it would be Belichick's best coaching job ever. <laughs> Speaking of wins, I think I saw somebody put a hundred dollars on the Colts to go winless, and I want to say it paid out like fifty grand or something like that. That's I think not it was a terrible on, on DraftKings. No, it's not bad. I mean, you just get a hundred bucks to spare. Yeah. No, I. I think the AFC East is going to be fun. I think both East divisions are going to be uh, interesting to, to keep an eye on there. And we'll have our picks all throughout the season for NFL games. Uh, we're going to segue into some college picks now. We'll uh, keep track of those, and you can bet with us or fade us. More than likely, you're going to fade Scotty. Um, <laughs> week zero, college football, just want to hit on real quick. Uh, we didn't learn a great ton in week zero. I, know, I don't think you guys watched as much football as I did Saturday, but Notre Dame, very good. Notre Dame also played Navy. Um uh, Notre Dame could have ran for 700 yards in that game if they wanted to. Uh, I was going to look up the worst losses in the United States you know, Navy history, but I didn't want to do that. and It would break my heart. And, uh, so I was going to have a really bad segue there. But, yeah, I don't insert whatever battle that we've lost at, at sea. That was the worst beating that uh, uh, the Navy took up front. Uh, since was, it, was it Pearl Harbor worthy? <laughs> wow. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> it, it, it was bad. What's that running back estimated for Notre Dame? Oh, and Leslie Frazier was the defensive coordinator you were thinking about yep. in Buffalo. Absolutely. Uh, but um, estimate just ran all over the place. It's just a, a case of bigger, faster, stronger, deeper, more talented uh, at Notre Dame just pushing Navy around. Uh, we did learn that USC still does not know how to play defense. Yeah. Um, they, the arm tackling is still there. The, the lack of physicality. USC is Oklahoma. I mean, yeah, Lincoln Riley left and went over there and all, but they have the same identity that his teams in Norman had. They will score all over the place, but they can't tackle. They don't make stops. They're Caleb Williams, better be on every single week. Um, that was that freshman branch that was returning kicks. He better be on because they're going to need to score 40, 50 points uh, to beat people because uh, that defense, if you can't stop San Jose State when it counts, uh, then I don't know what you're going to do when you play – Utah or Oregon State or something like that. I think their biggest problem is is that they score too fast. I think they need to be a slower team to allow their defense to not be on the field as much. Like their offense is their best defense, but that's not Lincoln Riley's style. He's going to play up tempo, but I think that's part of the problem is that the defense just can't be on the field that much time. We've yeah. seen that in the ACC the last few years with Carolina. I mean, like Carolina yeah. will go up and down the field, put up pinball numbers, yeah. but then you throw Gene Chidgick's ragamuffin defense back out there, and they're just giving it right, right back. Yeah, it was Chip Kelly in the NFL. <laughs> Pretty but much. No, uh, USC, yeah, I, I bet the under for some reason on them last week. I'll be betting the over probably on every game on, for them for the rest of the year probably. Well, the under, I went into a couple of games that we didn't give out on the show, but I went into a couple of games taking unders last week because I was like, oh, the clock, it's running now, not stopping for the first downs. It only took off a couple of minutes, and it, you only lost a couple of plays. So really, you're just getting more commercials uh, during the, yeah. the course of a football game with this running clock. Uh, yeah, it, it kept some scores down, but not – as much as I thought it would. I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference this this year. Um, before we get to our official picks this week, uh, what we're going to do each week uh, when we do our football picks, and you can find those on our social media. Uh, let's not do this on... On uh, Instagram, Facebook. 
uh, what else? Spotify. Threads. X. Uh, well, uh, Spotify's not social media. X is uh, underscore. Let's not do this. What do you mean? Spotify's not social media. You oh, can't. my bad. <laughs> I'm a oh, grandpa. Oh, I feel oh, like oh. I'm forgetting one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. TikTok. TikTok, yeah. Oh, I learned the, something today. The ticket the t- <laughs> oh, yeah. Subscribe to the YouTube. Yeah, subscribe to the YouTube. Make what sure about, you hit the subscribe button. We're like 20 uh, minutes too late on that, but it's yeah. okay. But that, it's good to drop it in there, you know? Uh, but yeah, we'll have our picks up there. You can follow us each week. So Ryan went 2-1 uh, and one last week. Let's go. Miracles do happen. Uh, none nuts over here that's suspended. He went... Uh, one and two. Yeah, y'all, y'all had the same picks. Yeah, so, we went. Yeah. Well, was, admit, and the, as soon as I agreed with him on anything, I knew I was wrong. <laughs> well, y'all did better than me. And w- you went zero oh and three. Yeah, the goose egg. The- yeah, college football is not not my uh, sport to bet on. Apparently. Well, luckily I'm we're going better, into uh, you know college football season. I'm so. gonna get better. I'm going five and zero oh this week. Well, we we won't be picking Virginia Virginia <laughs> wow. Tech games. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, well. Okay. Virginia Tech's going to beat Virginia at the end of the year. That's all you need to know about them too. Well, we do have that bet. Yeah, you and uh, yeah, man, did not be named. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> hopefully he's reinstated by then. Yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah. Um, right. <laughs> but we're not going to pick Virginia Virginia Tech games because we can't bet on them here. We're not going to pick NC State because Ryan and I are just going to pick NC State each week. Though, um, I will say briefly on those games this week, NC State starts Thursday on the road at UConn at the Rent, Rensselaer Stadium. They're expecting a, I think a full crowd or damn near a full crowd there. There's some buzz about UConn locally there. Jim Mora trying to turn things around. State beat the ever loving hell out of them last year um, in Raleigh. Devin Leary was quarterback in the pack at that time, though. He, of course, is now in Kentucky. Uh, so we'll see what Brendan Armstrong does in his debut in Raleigh. That line last time I saw it was like state minus 15. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a little inflated. I think state wins, but I don't think NC State necessarily covers that. Uh, if I was betting I on that, I would take state money line, but uh, I think state probably wins that game 12, 10 points, somewhere around there. I think UConn makes, it, makes them sweat a little bit, but I think NC State will get a, will get a win there. Yeah, I agree. At 15 is probably a little much on the road for state. First game, new quarterback, a lot of new uh, receivers. Um, we'll see. The defense should be stout. We'll, we'll see what happens. So any thoughts on NC State UConn? Oh, uh, yeah, 15 might be too much. Yeah. Maybe if it was like, I see they went about two touchdowns. Uh, yeah, it might be a slow start. might be one of them games you got to grind out and then just kind of pull away a little bit at the end. But, uh well, the next game is a game that will pull away pretty much right after kickoff. Um, Virginia and Tennessee, was it high noon, I want to say, Saturday? Uh, in, yeah. in, uh, in, in Nashville. Nashville. Yeah, in the, the Titan Stadium. Uh, yeah, pretty much if Virginia kicks off and Tennessee gets the ball, if they tackle the ball carrier on the kickoff, Tony Elliott should immediately call a timeout and get his guys to gather around and point to the scoreboard and take a picture. That's the closest that they'll be. The rest of the, of the day, it ain't going to be pretty in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this Tennessee team not as explosive as last year's, obviously, um, but they shouldn't be in the same state. They shouldn't be in the same stadium. They shouldn't be on the same planet um, as for Virginia. Obviously, Virginia's going to be very emotional. Wow. Uh, the first game, you know, after the the awful tragedy last year, uh, it's going to be a great story to see Mike Hollins come back on the field. I hope he has a good game. I hope he has a great season. I mean, just the, the fortitude to come back from that. Um, but, yeah, it's it, – and they have a 34-year-old kicker that used to be a Marine. I think he'll get the kickoff one time uh, if he's doing kickoffs, <laughs> and that'll be it. It ain't, it ain't going to be pretty. That's going to be that guy's first game, like, ever. Yeah. Like, he's never put on pads and a helmet before this season, ever. Like, imagine that, man. Like, he didn't play any high school ball. He didn't play any little league. He like, your first game is going to be on an NFL field. Against Tennessee. <laughs> Against Tennessee. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I In just think of, that's – it's what, just crazy. Ninety thousand drunken volunteer fans. Right. I mean, yeah, it'll be a hostile environment, but I just, I just think that's such a bizarre thing. So he was probably like, "I've never played football before. Uh, who will take me?" So I'm gonna take <laughs> UVA will take it. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. But for anybody not in Virginia, take the Tennessee alternate line as high as you can get it, <laughs> minus sixty or whatever it is, and put a unit on that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> If the balls don't score a 50 burger in this game, it, it, it is a letdown. I, I can tell you that it's a disappointment if you're Tennessee if you don't get a 50 burger uh, in, in this one. Virginia might not win a game this year. And I, I'm being completely serious uh, with that. They got a chance to win one. 
Maybe. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> William and Mary. Maybe. Yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike London's <laughs> revenge, ladies and gentlemen. Let's never forget that. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a tough game for him, no doubt. William and Mary is like a top five team in the uh, in, in FCS, yeah. but uh, they've had success in Charlottesville over the years too. I think BW Webb just picked off another Mark Verica pass somewhere and ran it back. <laughs> I can't wait for that line to be a pick em. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Could speaking be. of, I don't, what's the line on Virginia Tech and uh, ODU this time in Blacksburg? Uh, we know the Hokies have had their problems uh, with the folks down I-64 in Norfolk, the Monarchs uh, coming to town. Um, uh, I think this is just going to be a game that makes you like wonder why you're watching college football if you're not a fan of either <laughs> one of these teams. Is literally going to be the equivalent of like watching two drunk guys fight outside of a sizzler. Um, I think if Virginia Tech wins, it ain't going to be pretty. It's going to be like a 1916 kind of just ugly, why the fuck am I watching this? Is Vanderbilt playing? Oh, they've already played. What else can I watch kind of, kind of, kind of game? Well, Vegas disagrees with you. What's that? Uh, the Hokies are 16-point favorites. Really? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Well, you uh, put a little, if you want to drive across the points. line <laughs> yeah. to, to the uh, god awful state of Maryland and uh, set foot in the uh, MGM Casino, there, go ahead and uh, take um, ODU plus the points there. That's not my official pick. These are just our our state thoughts here. Uh, but yeah, Ryan, uh, your thoughts on the Hokies and the uh, Monarchs? Uh, again, I think that game is going to be again tighter than expected. I just think this is. This is ODU's Super Bowl, you know, like this is, you know, this is the one, you know, this is the biggest state game they're going to play, the biggest in-state rival game they're going to play this year. Well, do they play UVA this year? No. no. Okay, okay. They play UVA last year. Um, but, yeah, I, I think they're going to be up for the game. I don't think they're as good as they were last year. But, um, you know, I think it's a lot of pressure on Tech. I think it's a tremendous amount of pressure on Tech. That game's on a uh, fr- Friday night game. I think it's Friday, is it? It's an 8 o'clock game. Uh, I know that much. What's the second? What day is that? No, that's Saturday. Okay. S- Saturday night game. Um, I believe it's on ACC Network. Um, oh, boy. Uh, I mean, not that. That's a lot. Of, but still, it's a big game. It's a game that people are talking up. I know a lot of Tech fans are talking up that they, got, that they have to win, that they need to win. So I think it's going to be a little bit closer than expected. Um, you know, again, I could see this game being a 13, 10 to 13 point win for Tech. But I don't think they'll, they're going to cover 16. That just... I don't know. It just seems a lot of egg. For some weird reason, it reminds me of, the, uh, again, the San Diego State-USC game where San Diego State, this is probably the biggest game they're going to play all year. San Jose State. San Jose State. I'm sorry, not San Diego State. San Jose State. Um, the biggest game they play all year, biggest in-state rival, biggest school they're going to play. So they're going to play tough as long as they can. They're not going to give up. They're not going to lay down at any point of the game. So, um, you know, and they've had success against Tech before, so it's not like they're necessarily scared, I guess. Doesn't Tech have a ODU's receiver, Ali Jennings? Yeah, uh, yeah he transferred to Virginia Tech uh, yeah. this year, so Alice a little bit of a re- revenge game on, on both sides there. Sure, sure. Scotty, you're the resident Hokey. Uh, have you got your gobble all ready for the season? I wouldn't go that far. I think Tech wins, though. Um, I don't think they can afford to overlook these other in-state teams anymore because they haven't been that good. So uh, they know they have to come ready to play. I think they will. Uh, the line is a little too much for my liking, but uh, yeah, they'll win by a touchdown or two. So you're not going to take the 16, but you think at least 14? Wait, I'd yeah. say if you know, like 13 and a half. If it got down that low, I'd okay. take it. Yeah. Well, someone drive across the state line and uh, put put those bets in for us. Uh, games that we can bet on and games of uh, teams that can actually play football. Uh, some top 25 matchups here. Uh, Florida, unranked, on the road, going into beautiful Rice Eccles Stadium on Thursday night, taking on the Utes of the University of Utah, future Big 12 member next year. Um, I'll start off with this one. Uh, I'm going Florida, and I'm taking the money line, Florida plus 220. Uh, Gators won last year 29-26 in Gainesville. Um, they're leaving out to go there a little bit early. I think they're actually en route to Utah now because of the hurricane that's heading out to Florida. So I think they'll have a little bit longer to adjust to the altitude. So I think they're going to Texas first, and then they're not then, getting okay. there until like the day before the game. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, it's funny. There's two ways to approach the altitude. I know like when Virginia went out to Wyoming in 06, I want to say they went a few days early, and they got gassed. And then some teams like – I'll go out there just a day or so before. Mm-hmm. Um, the Rice Eccles, 40, over 4,600 feet above sea, sea level, even higher than Denver. So uh, altitude certainly will be a factor. Fitness certainly will be a factor. But 
Former Wisconsin quarterback Graham Mertz making his debut under center for the Gators. A uh, question for Utah, what concerns me, Cam Rising, tore his ACL, the quarterback in the Rose Bowl against Penn State. Says he feels pretty damn good. Um, wouldn't fully divulge if he's going to be in the lineup. Kind of joked around and said, you know, we'll see seven minutes before the kickoff. I still don't know how fully he's going to come back from an ACL that he tore in the Rose Bowl. So I keep an eye on that. Florida's still rebuilding maybe a year away. They got a, a great recruiting class. Recruiting, recruiting? I can't talk. Recruiting class? Recruiting. They got a great recruiting cr- class coming in next year. Say that word five times fast. Uh, but, yeah, I like Florida. Money line at Rice Eccles to get the win uh, over the Utes. Me, personally, I love uh, Utah in this game. Um, I got it at six and a half. Is that the line you all see for the game? Uh, let's move let's it around see. a little bit on a couple let's of the books see. here uh, as I pad here. But yeah, six yeah. and a half. Six and a half? Yeah. Okay. If I can get it at six and a half, I'll take the Utes. Um, so Utah minus is six and a half. Right, okay. right, right. Yes, yes. Um, I think the disruption of the week is not going to help out Florida. Um, again, going – have to go up the elevation is not going to help them um, because they – I don't know if they're getting there necessarily late, but you got to stop in Texas, and it, it just kind of messes up your week a little bit. Um, I know Cam Rising is a little bit hurt, but I just feel like Utah is a veteran team. I know I think, they, I, think I read that their offensive line – it's pretty much intact from last year, and they pretty much pushed around USC like in the in that uh, Pac-12 uh, championship game. Like they weren't there. They looked good in the Rose Bowl. Um, they played who did they play in the Rose Bowl? Penn State this year. Penn State. Yeah, so they've had some epic Rose Bowl games. The Ohio State one when Jackson Smith and Jigbo went off. I mean, they've <laughs> seemed like they always play exciting Rose Bowl games. But anyway, I, I just like them. Not a fan of Graham Mertz. Maybe that's what it is. I, I have a couple of buddies that are. Uh, went to Wisconsin once and uh, roommate of mine in, uh, at, at, at NC State is from Wisconsin and they always text me, text me that they hate Graham Mertz. Like, <laughs> they say that he's like the worst quarterback <laughs> like ever at Wisconsin. Of course, he, you know, he, he, had to, he transferred out and now he's at Florida. I just think first game is just going to be a lot on him to be you know, good. I think he'll, he'll be solid for Florida. I think he has more weapons um, as the year goes on, but I think there's just a, a, a lot uh, week one for him to uh, go up to uh, go up to Utah and beat them. Yeah, if I uh, if I had to pick a spread, I would probably pick uh, Utah minus six and a half. But uh, I'm actually going to go on that over over uh, forty four and a half now. It keeps dropping. Uh, it's forty four and a half on DraftKings right now. But yeah, <laughs> last year they was fifty five points in the game. Uh, Cam Rising is playing. Uh, like you were talking about Mertz, he's not great, but I think he'll be. I don't think he'll be as bad as a lot of. People are expecting. I think the offense will be okay, and they'll put up enough uh, enough points to uh, get to at least forty five points. Next up on the docket, uh, Saturday night in Happy Valley, number seven, Penn State playing host to West Virginia, two old rivals uh, going back at it again. Uh, this one, remember we talked about the Virginia game? It's over at kickoff. Uh, this one will be over about midway through the first quarter. Uh, Neil Brown will be the first coach. Fire this year uh, in, in Power Five football. You can go ahead and mark my words on that one. Uh, at West Virginia, he's twenty-two and twenty-five in five seasons at WVU. Mountaineers went five and seven last year, three and six in the Big Twelve. The cupboard is bare uh, in Morgantown. Uh, quarterback is gone. Uh, who was it? Um, I just went out of my brain. Uh, was um, it Slovis? It was Slo- uh, no Slovis was at uh, Pitt. Oh, transferred. Um, JT Daniels was yeah. at West Virginia. He's gone. I, I, kid's last name is Green. He's thrown a handful of passes, maybe 300 and some yards uh, total. Um, they do have former NC State receiver Devin Carter, who when he went into the portal originally committed to Penn State, uh, then uh, reneged on that and committed to West Virginia. Uh, felt like he could flourish a little bit more. Pretty much he's saying uh, these guys aren't as talented and I'm going to get the football more to showcase myself uh, as it, it, you know, it, if he hadn't, if he went to state college, he wouldn't have got the ball essentially. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, um, he'll probably will get some passes because West Virginia will be behind and they'll be throwing it a lot, but it ain't going to be pretty. Penn State's loaded, top to bottom. This is a team that could win the Big Ten. This is a team that could go to the playoffs. Uh, they're going to roll. It's uh, Penn State. I think the last time I saw the line, and as I just went away from my notes that I had here, twenty and a half. Yeah, twenty and a half. Yeah, and I got it. Penn State minus twenty and a half comfortably. You can get it minus twenty on Bed Rivers, but you guys seem not to like Bed Rivers. Oh, you know, I spread I spread the love around. I spread the love around. You know, we're still looking for a podcast sponsor. If you guys uh, want any sports books, want to yeah, reach out to us here for sure. Uh, but Scotty, uh, since you uh, got the line up there, uh, are you are you taking the Mountaineers? No, 
like I agree with you. Uh, it'll probably be like a 30, 40 point blowout. Uh, West Virginia is just not good going into Penn State. It's, yeah, it's going to be ugly quick. And that game in Happy Valley is not where you want to go when you're struggling. Right. Yeah. Penn State minus 20, minus 20 and a half, whatever it is. Ryan, uh, any sympathy for Devin Carter? Are you going with the uh, Mountaineers? No, Penn State um, minus twenty or twenty and a half, whatever line we want to go with with the game. Want to go minus twenty? I'll give I'll give everybody twenty. Okay, minus twenty. Um, I was looking at the I was looking at the total. I see it at fifty and a half. I just don't know if, if West Virginia is going to, you know, generate as many points. I mean, it could be. This thing could be Notre Dame Navy, you know, where it's yeah. like 42 to three or something like that. So, yeah, it's definitely a uh, Penn State and Happy Valley. I just West Virginia. I just think it's too much for them. the marquee matchup. Uh, well, maybe not the best game, but the game that everyone's kind of looking forward to. That everyone's talking about and Fox is there for their big noon uh, kickoff on Saturday at noon. We got Colorado on the road. Uh, the unranked Buffaloes coming off that one in 11 season. Deion Sanders now at the helm taking on. TCU. Last time we saw the Horn Frogs out, I think uh, Georgia has scored again uh, on them somewhere during this conversation. 17th ranked Horn Frogs, noon uh, there in Fort Worth. Um, two new quarterbacks in this game. Chandler Morris taking over for Max Duggan, of course, at TCU. He's a son of uh, Chad Morris, who was probably the worst SEC coach we've seen in some time at Arkansas. Um, he did start the first half of that game in Boulder last year against Colorado, left with an injury. Then we know what Max Duggan came in and, and did. And, of course, uh, Shadir Sanders coming in from uh, Jackson State along with Dion. Um, the scout for TCU has to be weird on this one because literally Sonny Dykes is like he's not watching any film from Colorado last year because it's a completely different team. Like literally yeah. coaching staff, players, everything is different. I don't know how you quite prepare for that. Yeah, you can watch Jackson State film to see what some of Dion's tendencies are, but you have better players Bigger roster, more resources, and guys coming in from all over. I think it's going to give them some issues because I don't think TCU quite knows fully what they're facing. And on the same time, Colorado doesn't quite know fully what they have all together. Uh, the line on this one right now is TCU minus uh, 20 and a half. Last time I saw it, um, I am going to take the Buffaloes plus the 20 and a half points. I think the offense will be good enough uh, to keep them in this game. I think they make it interesting. Um, but also Colorado money line is plus six fifty. If you got a little extra cash, may not hurt to sprinkle a couple on that. But uh, my official prognostication, I'm taking Colorado plus a twenty and a half in Fort Worth. I'm going to uh, disagree with you. If this was later in the season, I would agree with you. But uh, I just think it's too much. What do they have? Eight? Did you say eighty five new players? Or did I hear that somewhere else? Uh, in May of it. I think they had eighty five <laughs> new players from last year. Is what I heard. That's just that's just too much, and the new coaching staff and all that. Uh, TCU has some continuity. Um, I know they lost Duggan, but they got was it was his name again Chandler Morris. Yeah, yeah, they got him. He was supposed to be the starter last year, so you know, yeah. Give me uh, TCU minus twenty and a half. Um, I think with this game, <clears throat> I, I I don't know enough about either team. To be honest with you, I haven't done really my homework on this game, um, but I do think. I, the over under is way too high. I have it at sixty four. I don't know if that's it's. This is on Fox Sports' site. I don't. I don't know what book they're they're getting this off of. But um, hell, what, what'd you say? Sixty four. You seen that? So anywhere? it's kind of going. Some books have it at sixty three and a half. Some at sixty four. The hook will get you. Yep. If you give it, I mean, I'll take it either one. Be honest with you, well, I'll take sixty three under. Yeah, I'm taking the under. Oh, yeah, we'll give you 64. Yeah, I, I just don't think this game will be – I know it's I know it's TCU. I know it's it's Big 12, but I just see both teams struggling a little bit on offense early with these new quarterbacks and all these new players. Even though I know Chandler Morris is – he's been in the system. I just, I just think there's going to be a little bit of a struggle, maybe a little bit of a sloppy game, a lot of hype in this game, first game of the year. I could see this game maybe being maybe a 28 to 24 – 28 the you know 20 i think tcu will win it but like leon said i think it'll be closer to 20 and a half i think that's a lot of points but again i don't know enough about colorado's uh roster other than shakur sanders and the uh and hunter the really good hunter. right the good cornerback slash wide receiver that they have i don't know enough about everybody else on the team so um again i would just go with the under i just think it's just gonna be a little bit of a sloppy game 
I think Colorado's going to be able to run the ball a little bit. Uh, that running back McCaskill, he's coming off of the ACL. He put up big numbers to Houston when he was a freshman and they had the ACL last year. But one game, one name to keep an eye on this game, Cavassier Smoke transferred in uh, from Kentucky. Uh, he did some special things there at running back. Didn't have a ton of carries, <laughs> but he, had, he was averaging over 5.6 yards a carry. When he was touching the ball. You just wanted to say his name. Just to say it. Exactly. Cavassier Smoke. He's on the all main team. <laughs> one of the best Cavassier names. Smoke. But I think if the if the Buffs can you know get control the clock a little bit, run the ball on the ground. You know Dion's gonna take some big shots, but I think they're definitely gonna have to run the ball a little, little bit. I by the way, what do you guys want to bet that the first play of the game is like gonna be a deep bomb for for, for Colorado? Yeah, he'll try to it's make gonna a statement. A Shador to Travis, hey, uh, yeah, it's flea flicker, flicker or something yeah. to Travis Hunter, yeah. He'll, he'll try to get them off, you know, try to get the momentum. Yeah, it's definitely going to be something flashy uh, with uh, Dion. Um, all right, so Saturday night's all right for fighting. Uh, Saturday night, 730 in the Queen City. The Duke's Mayo Classic in College Game Day is here for number 21, North Carolina, taking on the Gamecocks of South Carolina. USC, yes, USC, the real USC, in our opinion, well, my opinion at least, um, they won 38-21 when these teams last faced off in the uh, Dukes-Mayo Bowl back in 2021. Cox have arguably the toughest schedule um, in America. Their opponents won 66% of their games uh, last season, so this kicks off a big stretch for them. Both defenses left a lot to be desired last year. Uh, South Carolina only has one scholarship uh, running back returning in Juju McDowell. Uh, and there's also wide receiver depth issues for Carolina. They're still waiting to see if Tez Walker is his eligibility issue going to get cleared up. Mac Brown says he has two game plans, one with Tez, one without Tez. So we'll see which one they end up having to use. And uh, Nicole Harbor, uh, also questionable for Carolina. Um, I think it's going to be a shootout. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing 49, 42, something like that. Um, as much as it pains me, I'm going to take North Carolina minus the two and a half. I just don't think South Carolina has enough to get into a shootout with North Carolina. Both defenses are bad. It's it's going to be get your popcorn, get ready to watch a lot of points. Um, I think Shane Beamer is a little bit sharper of a coach right now at this stage than Mac, uh, but I think Carolina has more talent roster-wise, top to bottom, especially – um, Drake May against Spencer Rattler. I'm going to take Drake May uh, in a gunfight there. Um, again, this game's tough to handicap too. Like like Leon said, there's a lot of ands and ifs and maybes, and you know, will Taz Walker play? Uh, you know, who knows who uh, uh, South Carolina has on defense? Um, so I, definitely, I think it's going to be a higher scoring game. Um, that over under is sixty four and a half. I'm 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 thinking that that this could be like App State and UNC last year when they played a crazy overtime game that was like I want to say that game was in the fifties or sixties. I believe it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I I'll, I'm probably gonna hate myself for for going taking the over here, but I have it at sixty four and a half, um, uh, as the over under. And I'll take the over. I know it's a lot of points, but I just feel like this game is going to be a shootout. Um, If Spencer Rattler plays like he did at the end of last year, again, that Tennessee game when he just went completely off, he just went crazy that game. I I just feel like he's going to have that confidence going into that game to where, uh, like you're saying, they'll be able to move the ball. Carolina has no defense. North Carolina has no defense. Uh, Let's say clarify. Right, right. And and Drake May will – will definitely, you know, put up numbers, especially the way he ended last year. I think he wants to kind of tell people, like, you know, end of last year was a little bit of a a fluke, you know. Because, I mean, literally, his his last two or three games last year, he was getting his ass kicked, basically. Can we have uh, those teams just play for the name Carolina? Because both of them want to call themselves Carolina. Can, Can we just sell it once and for all with this game? Like someone gets to claim the moniker of Carolina. I just want to see another one of those frat fights or whatever was going on outside <laughs> Brad's versus Chad. Oh, it was like 2019, was I want to say, they played. Yeah, uh, and they it was, the season of yeah, They were fighting every, that everywhere. A, that was the best part of the game right there, just seeing that fight at, at the, outside the stadium. About 20, 30 dudes were just going at it. Yeah, it's vinegar barbecue sauce against, uh, against mustard. The, the, the mustard gold <laughs> sauce there. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Scotty, um, these are states, North Carolina and South Carolina, and they play are a they? game called football. Okay. Um, Carolina's very good at basketball. Uh, North Carolina, historically, not last year. I know Virginia Tech fans aren't used to that round ball that goes through the hole. Uh, but what do, you, what do you think about this one here? Uh, I agree with Ryan, actually. I was flip-flopping on the uh, spread, and then – 
yeah, I'm just going to go with the over. Like, uh, two bad defenses, two really good quarterbacks. Uh, over at 64 and a half. All right, settling for some, for some points. Points galore. And then rounding things out, uh, Labor Day, Monday night, uh, the Camping World kickoff. What is this game in Orlando, I want to say? Um, no, yeah, it's in Orlando. Yeah, yeah in, Florida State LSU. In, in Orlando, Florida State LSU. Number five LSU taking on number eight Florida State. Kind of a de facto home game for, for for Florida State. Say that five times fast. But LSU travels well, of course. Um, Mason Smith, the started staying out defensive tackle for LSU. He will not be able to play, serving a one game suspension by the NCAA for pre. NIL autograph signing back in 2021. So that will uh, be a hiccup there. The, uh, the NCAA needs to like stop. Like literally, these players are getting paid millions of dollars now to go play football, and they're reaching back to 2019 and 2020 or whenever this guy was signing. Tw- whenever 2021, sign, like get over them, get over yourselves, NCAA. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, they're bitter. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Florida State in the ACC this year. I think they're a title threat. Um, Florida State, if everything shakes down. Could be a dark horse team to watch out for college football playoff if everything shakes down right. Jordan Travis, if he's healthy, I like them a lot. I just feel like Jaden Daniels and LSU is going to give them a little too much to handle. I think Florida State is almost ready for primetime, but I don't think they're fully there yet. Um, and I think we're going to see the difference between the SEC roster and the ACC roster um, in this game. I think it's going to be close. Um, but I'm going to take LSU minus the three and a half. I think they're going to outlast the uh, Knowles. Uh, excuse me, minus two, two and, and a half. half. Excuse yeah, me. Yes, big difference. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a big difference. Well, I can't read. You know? yeah. Reading and writing is not my thing. But yeah, minus two and a half. I'm taking uh, LSU. Now, if this game was in uh, Nola, then I would bump that up to maybe ten. But uh, in, I guess what, what do you think? It'll probably be like seventy thirty Knowles fans, maybe sixty forty. Uh, probably seventy thirty. And maybe 65, 35. We'll, yeah. we'll cut it in the middle there. Yeah, but meet in the middle. Slightly off neutral crowd. I, I still like L- LSU here. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I'm not quite as high on Florida State as a lot of people, other people are. Um, if you look at their schedule last year, if you look at the final AP poll, they only beat one ranked team, and it happened to be LSU on a blocked extra point. But if you look at the teams that were ranked when they played them, they were 0 3. So, I mean, I really. They're headed in the right direction for sure. They're a lot better, but uh, I just think they're not ready for LSU at this point. Uh, give me LSU minus two and a half. And LSU is going to be probably remembering that game last year. Yeah. You know. I'll be contrarian, and I will take Florida State plus two and a half and essentially a home game for them. Uh, they're plus 122, so 10 bucks will get you $22. Um I don't know. I just think I just think they Florida State has to make a stand somewhere to say, "Hey, we're actually contenders in the ACC, and we need to win a win a game." Not that, I mean, they beat LSU last year, but I mean, like, I don't know. I still think people are doubting them. Um, so I, I don't know. I just think uh, Nor- Mike Norvell, even though I'm not a big Florida State fan, I still think Clemson's going to win the ACC because uh, I don't think they can beat Florida State. I don't think they can beat Clemson in Death Valley because I think that's where the game is this yeah. year. But I do think somehow, some way, they're going to win this game. Two and a half. Again, I'll take the plus money uh, on again a, a game in the state of Florida. Again, it's not in uh, it's not in Tallahassee, but uh, I, I think I think they may pull off another one. Well, you just heard me crack my beer, and that's exactly what I'll be doing Monday night for this one because that's going to be a fun game uh, to watch. We got a nice little weekend of football coming up here. Week zero is like. Yeah, it's back, but but now college football is back in earnest, and I'm very excited for it. Yeah, so once again, we have one unanimous uh, unanimous bet. Last week, we had Vandy minus 17 and a half, and that didn't work out. Yeah, so uh, much. we got uh, Penn State minus 20 this week. So uh, everybody go bet on West Virginia, I guess. And Neil Neil Brown's gonna keep <laughs> his job for one more week, maybe. I guess he, I guess you know they they go in there and just say, you know just, let's let's try to keep it respectable, Neil. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. All right, so um, shifting away from sports, we got some fun stuff uh, this week here. I saw this story in the New York Post, and it didn't quite make sense to me. And if our suspended friend was here, uh, there would definitely be a joke in this uh, for him. But a uh, Chinese couple, and uh, that might be racist. It 
I'm just stating facts here, people. Just stating facts. Uh, they, <laughs> they were from China. Um, this story originally was in the Daily Mirror, aggregated by the New York Post. This couple was trying to conceive a child for four years, and they were unable you know, to conceive a child. So, um, unfortunately, a lot of people deal with these issues, and they went to a doctor to you know, see was there something wrong with one of them or is there some sort of treatment they can do, whatever it may be. Um, so they went to a doctor in the Guangzhou province, and this uh, couple, uh, age 24 and 26, they were married pretty young, and I guess they were maybe their first partners, maybe the only partners they've ever had. Um, the obstetrician realized something was awry after the woman claimed that intercourse was unusually painful, uh, but she powered through it with hopes of uh, hitting the prenatal pay dirt, according to the article. Well, they did some more tests only for them to reveal that uh, the woman was, quote, a virgin, <laughs> end quote. Well. Um, this prompted the uh, doctor to inspect her anus, as Borat would say, <laughs> whereupon uh, they discovered the ability to conceive was due to the fact that they'd been mistakenly engaging in anal sex for four years. Well, <laughs> how, how is that real? Like, I, where, where in China? I know it's a big country, but where, where do you grow up where you don't know how to have, like, like at least know what the body parts and what goes and what to conceive? Maybe their parents didn't sign the permission slip in school. <laughs> You know, you get the permission slip and you get the little, you know, here's the howdy doody, whatever. Girls come out of that meeting with chocolate and stuff. And we all just got shown a bunch of things about the football coach. And then he just like shows football highlights. It was like 20 minutes. If, so, if, if that. I'm going to tell you what happened. The guy did not want to have a kid. Okay. So he somehow, <laughs> he somehow convinced this girl that this is how babies were made. That's the only explanation. So, he, he, <laughs> again, the girl, like, how, again, how did you get to 24 years of life and or 26 well, years think, of life uh, and not understand? Things are probably a little different in China. I, I guess, guess as that's far what as I, like exposure to that. <laughs> I've never Whatever. been to China, but man, <laughs> like, that's well, like, did she not, like, okay, maybe she was from a very religious family. Maybe it was very strict. Maybe she didn't know a lot about sex or <laughs> same thing with, with, with him. But, like, you would think, like, she would. Like talk to one of her girlfriends and like, hey, this does not feel great. This is, you know, this is not good. Like, none of her girlfriends were like, this sounds peculiar. Like, what's you know, I I just don't understand how we got to this point. Maybe, maybe if someone said three four weeks, maybe, and, and maybe if they were new, if this was their first time, I could see four years. By the way, she's been drilled back there more than Jenna Jameson. Four years. <laughs> Scotty, uh, they, they served a full term. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you like her her, her phone number? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> okay, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, so, so, well, you had another story about uh, the uh, back door, the uh, the dirt road, if if you will. <laughs> yeah. So uh, apparently, there's a uh, a study. I want to meet the guy that did this study, but uh, there's a huge increase in uh, hospitalizations from people getting foreign objects. In there, as you called it, they're anus. They're anus. <laughs> so, so, yeah, according to the study, it was uh, 4,000 people a year go to the hospital for this now. A couple <laughs> of things immediately popped into my mind. Um, I know I'm the Seinfeld guy of this group, but have you seen that episode of Seinfeld where Kramer made Fusilli Jerry out of, like, pasta? What, what Jerry? Fusilli, like the pasta. Oh, okay. He made a, a Jerry, like doing stand up out of Fusilli pasta. Mm -mm. And I think it was uh, George's dad sat down on it. And uh, yeah, it went right on up there. There was an episode where Kramer got the license plates that said Ass Man. He got his plates mixed up with the proctologist. <laughs> um, that made me think about that. And then the, uh, what was it, Jackass? Was it the first or second Jackass movie when Ryan Dunn put the toy yeah. car up his ass? Yeah. 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 Um, did they say what kind of objects? I mean, obviously, there's sexual toys, I would imagine, but what other objects went up into people's uh, rectums? Uh, I don't know if they went into it's a, a lot of detail. Uh, they said, they said balls. Like, I, I, I'm assuming, like, a ball, like a sport, like a little ball. <laughs> Who's? I don't know. Someone's got a tennis ball. ball up there? I guess. Balls. Is there a pickleball up there? Says, Maybe. Uh, Marbles. <laughs> well, okay, so. Drugs. 
<laughs> guess, what the, guess what the average the mules, <laughs> drug mules. <laughs> guess what the average uh, age is for someone to get for something st- stuck up their ass? Yeah, uh, nineteen. <laughs> I'm way too low. I'm scared. Seventeen. <laughs> No, you gotta go up. You gotta go up. Oh, you said low. Like I, oh, no, you're I'm way, dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dumb. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. dumb. Yeah, we, I'm we dumb. Know. That's okay. Though. Uh, <laughs> 66. 40, 43. Oh, Ryan, you're you're people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Seventy eight percent were male. Our suspended friend would have something to weigh in on that yeah, if, yeah, if see, he was here. He would he would be very outspoken about this. And like Ryan was saying, like marbles, drugs. They said over half the foreign bodies were sexual objects. So. The marbles. Is that a sex thing? Is there something with marbles and... Some homemade beads. The, <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just break off some... Oh, I'm going to hell. Like, You're going to break off some rosary beads? <laughs> Lord, wow. I apologize. I apologize wow. to the Catholic Church. I apologize to everyone <laughs> associated with that. But yeah, so... Um, all right. Look, and look at this. It says, uh, researchers found an increase in hospital visits for rectal foreign... I- Rectal foreign items over the span they studied, rising from 1.2 hundred thousand persons in 2012 to 1. 1.9 in 2021. I mean, think of that. Like you know, whatever this, you know, the you know Richmond metro area, you know where we live. Uh, they you know it's what two million people I think live. Like you know Henrico, Chesterfield, Hanover, Maybe, sure. yeah. city of Richmond. That sounds right. So, I mean, that's like what? I'm trying to do the math here. Two for every 100,000. So, that's like 20 people. Well, I mean, uh, we got four people on this podcast. Three are here tonight. One <laughs> has had things up there. So, I mean, that's 25% in this room right right now. I mean, that's just a lot of people. Yeah, when, per, you, put it, when you put it that way, that is a lot. I like, mean, like. <laughs> what is going on? I mean, like, you can get a football stadium. You can go to <laughs> University <laughs> oh. of Tennessee. <laughs> I thought I was with I you. thought he was going to say you can put a football up there. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying a football stadium of 100,000 people, mm-hmm. like a Tennessee or Michigan or wherever, and like one of these people, <laughs> two of these people have gotten something stuck up their ass, probably. What an audible that, hospital. What an audible that would be. <laughs> Brown 19. <laughs> Did you think anyone's ever gotten a football stuck up there before? No. no way. I mean, look, Ripley's belief. Well, that's a real rip. Uh, Ripley's <laughs> <laughs> belief. In her- I'm going to have to move myself. There you go. Maybe, maybe one of them smaller toy footballs. Oh, oh, he's going to the car. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, like first idea. car of the night. Yeah. I'm only, I'm only yellow now. <laughs> I'm, I'm being cautioned in the 113th minute. <laughs> A little toy football, probably. Okay, what about those helmets? Remember those helmets? What? You used to get out of the vending machine when you were oh. a kid. You put the quarter in and you turn it. And it's like, oh, I got a little Houston Oilers helmet. I mean, uh, I could see that. Uh, yeah, I could see that happening. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. How many of these, what do you say, 43-year-olds? Yeah. <laughs> That's and, the average. Mid- midlife crisis, man. <laughs> right. Y- y'all a few years away. That's yeah. <laughs> experiment go- there. going on there. Well, you know, if you get these things stuck in your ass, uh, you may need to consult the Bible. And if you want to reach out, uh, there's now apparently a new application uh, where you can text Jesus or text Satan. Now, I... I got a lot of questions about this. This is an AI uh, chat bot. Uh, what was it? Welcome to the world of text with Jesus. Is that the name of it? <laughs> yeah. What? The design with devoted Christians in mind, text with Jesus, <laughs> praises interaction with figures like Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Peter, and Matthew. Um, and so now you can go into this AI and you can text, what is it, two ninety nine dollars a month. You can embark on a journey through some of the Bible's more intricate dialogues like Adam and Eve's narrative or the dawn of humanity. Uh, the app's most controversial feature, conversations with Satan himself. <laughs> so my, my question is, who would you rather, who would you text first, Satan or Jesus? <sighs> Uh, I, you know, I, I think I got to go with Satan. Yeah. I, I got to figure out like, yeah. like, like, like the bad shit, like Satan, like, should I go to work today? He's like, no, set the building on fire. Like, that, that's what I would get. Does, does it speak back to you in like a demonic voice? So apparently, no, it's all text. Apparently Satan's like, I won't say optimistic. Let me see the words. <laughs> but he's not, optim- he's not like an asshole or anything. He like, but he ends everyone with the, like, he's a friendly a- Satan. With an, a devil emoji, but it's like, uh, <laughs> Jeez. 
Look at Ozzy Osbourne concert. <laughs> like, oh my god! So that that just Satan can't be optimistic. I mean, like you're Satan. I mean, that just takes all the fun out. It I, says it's an odd mix of solemnity and sass, which will undoubtedly spark reactions from sass. blah blah blah. So yeah, so he's not like evil or anything. He's just kind of like regular. Satan. Satan sassy is Satan gay? Is, is, is there a gay Satan? We I might mean, have a podcast I, title. I, I think some. I think some Christians would probably think that. <laughs> we're going off. We're all going to hell. Wow. This is Sodom and Gomorrah reference. No, wow. Something like that in, in here. Wait, I'm I'm texting Satan first to be like, yeah, who's all down there? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just. So, uh, is Dan Snyder going to have his own room down there? That's what I want to know. <laughs> it's like, I, I'm just playing cards with Mussolini. What, what are you up to right now? He likes to cheat, you know. Me and Pol Pot going for a walk later. Yeah. I, that's what I like to know. Honestly, I like to know, like, who is down there? Is, you know, is, like, yeah. you know, David Koresh down there? Like, you know, he's no, we, supposed to have been a man, you know, a holy man. You know, we'll see but, David Koresh at the bar that we're going to later. So here it is. So, like, users were anticipating fiery dialogues, but it says, instead, the Prince of Darkness champions love, respect, and understanding. <laughs> Yeah, that's so no it, good. Is this a that's no good. this can't be a Christian based app? The app is Satan is like love, respect, and understanding. Maybe Seems like he's trying to convert you. Maybe it's the other way. You know what? Maybe this is a ploy yeah. by uh, by the Satanists to uh, convert some people here. Maybe Might I be. don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what is Jesus? Is Jesus like? Because in every movie, you got like the you know the Jesus and the Satan on the shoulder and like giving you the good and bad advice. So is Jesus telling you to skip work and drink forties? It doesn't say what like what G- those conversations are like. Jesus a badass or something like, it's like <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus a badass. Right? I mean, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. Like he shows up he like the edge to him. Um, like the Undertaker. Remember when the Undertaker went through his American badass phase? Yeah. He came to the ring, listened to Kid Rock, ride the motorcycle. Exactly. That that's my Jesus. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just odd anyway that anybody, like, how much does it cost, you said, a month? Two ninety nine. Yeah. Which, by the way, it's cheap yeah. enough Which, for people way, to do it. Yeah. If you can talk to Jesus or Satan, two ninety nine a month seems a little cheap, no? Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm, it's I'm sure they'll to, raise it once. I yeah. mean, Scotty spends more than that on OnlyFans models a month. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, is Brianna ever going to text you back? I have never purchased anything on there, sir. <laughs> Well, I guess maybe you're renting the content. Maybe I'm not sure. <laughs> but all right, well, we'll we'll see what happens uh, with this app. I'm sure everyone that's made it or associated with it is going up in flames, much like uh, we are, and much like this podcast is uh, right Pretty now. Much. It is hot as hell in this. Yeah, and yeah, I am sweating profusely like, like a uh, in like a whore in church. Maybe closer to uh, hell than you think. <laughs> well, Even um, though we're on the third floor. <laughs> 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 well, hell is uh, a flight with children everywhere. Uh, hell for me pretty much is children anywhere. Um, I like children. I just don't want them in adult situations. You know, when I'm at the bar or a restaurant or you uh, know, okay, I see you're the grocery there. store, anywhere, you know. Uh, but there's a airline called Corindon, C-O-R-E-N-D-O-N. They're offering a section for an extra $75. That's adults only. And the flights will be from Amsterdam to Curaçao. So this is a Dutch airline. Flying from Dutch, uh, you know, Amsterdam to, you know, Curacao off the coast of Venezuela is Dutch controlled. Would you guys pony up 75 bucks for an adult's only section on a plane? For a flight that long, I probably, probably would. If it was, a, you know, if it was a flight from Richmond to wherever, New York or Boston, our flight, sure. But yeah, like, uh, I, I'm sure that flight's probably, I'm assuming six hours, seven hours, probably. I would probably pony up. <laughs> Yeah, I guess on a longer flight. Yeah, I guess. I don't why, know. Why stop there? Why just 75 bucks for a section? Why don't we just have like an entire adults only flight? I just don't. Well, I can't say that the airline wouldn't be able to fill that flight up, but Dude, I don't know. You're going on vacation from Amsterdam to Curacao. I don't know how many people vacation in Curacao, but you know. Tropical climate, yeah. I assume. Sure, yeah, yeah. The, uh, sure, a party a Dutch, plane, so. yeah. A party plane. Yeah. Remember, Hooters had an airline at one point. Hooters cool. Air. This is a ten-hour, ten-minute flight. So yeah, I would pay the seventy-five. Yeah, I would, I would yeah. pay a hundred dollars. I may pay one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, I want your right. But here's the thing, though. Okay, that separate section. More than likely, you're probably going to be. What do you, you think? Toward the back, maybe middle back. They said it's up front. It's up front, front part okay. of the plane. Yeah, front. according to the article. But, but I figure like you gotta put the kids near the restroom, so maybe the kids are toward the back. But I feel like the sound—I mean, you're in a 
pressurized tube. The sound's just going to carry. What is what? Wait, wait, wait. Section sorry. off of walls and curtains, according to the thing. The curtain's not a sound. Well, it said walls. Dimmer. Well, I mean, it'd be better. Yeah, but what kind of wall are you going to have on the plane? There's got to be like right. something safe. If you go down, you can't have people trying to bust through the wall with the goddamn Kool-Aid, man. <laughs> okay, so are there parents that are like bringing their kids and then they're sitting in like the adult section and they're like just making their kids go sit in the kids section? Oh, on the, so kind of on the company up. miners, yeah. just <laughs> that is, that's a good point. You know, someone is going to do that. <laughs> and like some poor woman that's just flying to go visit her grandson yeah, that lives up, in Corsa. I was yeah. really watching these brats. They're up front getting wasted and their kids are in the back, like terrified. <laughs> hey, hey lady, I don't know you, but can you take my daughter to the bathroom? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would pay like, if it's a 10 hour flight. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, uh, $75 is nothing. Absolutely nothing to have no kids, no screaming. You're going to hear a little bit of noise, but you don't, you don't have to worry about that kid being in the row in front of you or behind you or beside you yelling in the air who's like three years old. I mean, God bless those parents. I know they have, you can't just leave your kids at home when, when they want to go on vacation or visit, visit the parents or their in-laws or whoever. But, I mean, it's rough. I was on a flight one time from uh, Boston to Richmond, and there was a kid that was really two rows in front of us, and that kid did not stop screaming the entire flight. I didn't understand how to, what lung capacity this kid has. <laughs> this kid's going to be a swimmer or a singer or something because the kid never stopped crying. And the mom and dad were doing everything they could, but this kid would not get settled. <laughs> was he drunk? Is he a hokey fan? The kid? Yeah. Hokey? I don't know where they were from. Well, <laughs> they could usually, be. They could be from Richmond. They're usually loud and belligerent. Hokey oh, fans. God. Hokey fans. Yeah, drunk. Okay. <laughs> you know. Hey, they're, man. They're like Maryland people. If Maryland people had tractors and no electricity. I, I got. I got airplane bottles thrown at me when uh, I went to a hokey game. That yeah. was a long time ago. But their first ACC game, when NC State won, I was loud and belligerent myself because I was <laughs> drunk, and a rain of airplane bottles came crashing were down they, on my head. Were they full or empty? Some were full. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> they were you, just gifts. You yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they Congratulations. Were, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you better hope there was liquor in those bottles. It wasn't like uh, Estadio Azteca. Uh, oh, I, or piss. I didn't. I yeah. Didn't, yeah, I didn't take any of them. They're, they're, they're famous them. for that Estadio Azteca. They'll uh, fill airplane bottles with liquor and like throw that at, I mean, with piss and throw that at you wow. or bags of piss. Uh, you don't I mean, wanna, you don't want to fuck around with Mexico. I, I was just trying to get out of there. Me and my friend uh, Joel. We went down there. Billy, you, and, you and Billy Joel went to Blacksburg? And his name is Joe. His first name is Joel. Uh, Joe Clatt. Yeah. There we go, Colorado. And yeah, that, yeah, that was the uh, 10 sack game. Ah, with Mario sacks. Williams. We set the NCAA record with number of sacks. Like Mario Williams and uh, Manny Lawson game. Yeah. Was it Al Clark playing quarterback for Virginia Tech then? No, it was uh, Brian Randall's Brian first Randall. game. That's right. That's right. After, yeah. I guess it was after Marcus Vick. Yeah. The, no, the, so, uh, the heat's messing up my brain. Yeah, Brian Randall was there first. Yeah. Okay, so maybe was, after yeah, Michael. The year yeah. I went there it was like the year that was kind of like both of them were kind of playing a little bit. Yeah, it was yeah. after it was after it was the year after Michael Vick. So it must have been what two thousand Marcus three. Yeah. Oh, it was the year after Marcus. Yeah, because Brian okay. Randall and Marcus were there at the same time, and the year I went there was a uh, oath. I guess it was a oath three. Yeah, oath three season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say oh three. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it was definitely Brian Randall's first legit starter okay. game. Yeah. yeah. Well. On that note, we'll wrap this thing up here uh, as we all sweat like a horse uh, yep. in church. Um, maybe we can use that app to uh, text Satan to figure out how to deal with the heat. Um, <laughs> Scotty, any parting words for our, our, our viewers, listeners? Uh, just uh, tune in, rate us five stars on all the uh, Spotify and all that, and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, I'm giving sure. Leon a red card right quick. Yeah, he deserves one for sure. For Throw him out the last few seconds. I don't, know, I don't know why, but you deserve it. I'm calling Satan about that red card. <laughs> Speed dial one. <laughs>